Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Um, let's go with Portia, Curtis, and Jordan because when Portia and Curtis are talking, this kind of sums up my first part of my issue that I'm having with Curtis. And that's when Portia's like, listen, no one's perfect. You know, you lie, I lie, we all lie. But, you know, the question is, do you want your marriage to work? Like, you know, do you want to fight for your marriage? Because the whole time when, you know, she's talking to Curtis, Curtis is not there saying, well, you know, I love my wife. You know, that's not the problem, but the trust is the problem. It's like this whole, you know, like I get it. I get it from Curtis' standpoint. You know, um, you can love somebody, you know, you can have all the love in the world, but if you don't have trust, you don't have anything. And I totally understand where Curtis is coming from to an extent. But when Jordan is sitting there talking to Curtis, you know, and, and Jordan's like, listen, I want you to come back home. You know, can we just come back home and just talk? And, you know, Curtis is like, you know, he kind of gives her, he just brushes it off for a little bit. And Jordan's like, listen. This whole limbo that's been going off about a month is not working for either one of us. You know, either you need to come back home and we can try to work on this marriage. Or you need to sit there and say that you don't want to and I can just give up hope. You know? And she walks off. And you know what? She says she deserves that. And she does. This whole... <sighs> You know, this whole limbo thing that he's been doing for a while, it's just been kind of annoying to some extent, you know? One minute he's sitting there moping about how he doesn't sit there and trust her, but then in the same breath he's sitting there talking about how he loves her. I'm like, well, what do you want to do? You you, you haven't, you know, every time she's been sitting there trying to talk to you, you've been just constantly brushing her off. So it's like, do you want this to work or do you not want this to work? Like, what do you want? So... Hopefully, they will actually get to some point where it's like, Curtis, decide what you want. One or the other, because this, this nonsense needs to stop. And, again, I, I don't sit there and say nonsense as far as diminishing Curtis' feelings, as far as, like, you know, his, his trust in, you know, Jordan is gone, or nearly gone. I get that. But with that being said... You need to sit there and make up your mind about what you want. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about this whole Alexis, Sam, Franco thing. First of all, Sam, I don't know if she had too many Red Bulls or something, but she is practically yelling and she wants answers. And Liz is like, listen, we're, we're both at work right now, like, we're not going to have this discussion right here. But Sam is just like, not having it. I was like, okay, Sam. Um, Miss Bossy, I, clearly you have the floor. What, what do you have to say? So, Franco pretty much tells Sam, you know, I have a contingency plan in case I go bad. And asks for me to get put down. And I'm pretty sure she meant, um, she said Jason was going to be the one that's going to put a bullet in his head. In case, you know, he goes back to being bad Franco. While that's going on, um, Alexis is, I guess, like, not in a, in a doctor's office or whatever, and she's looking at the drugs or whatever, and I'm just sitting there thinking, Alexis, what the hell are you about to do? So we go from drinking to just, what, like, finding drugs to shoot up? Like, and she looks at the biggest syringe there, and I'm just like, what are you doing? At some point, Franco's head starts to hurt, and he starts kneeling to the ground, and he's, he's yelling, he's in pain, and, you know, Sam is like, you know, Sam is, is like, you know, Franco, what's going on, so she's yelling and stuff like that. Meanwhile, Alexis is just, you know, knocking him back with those little drinks or whatever. Apparently, I, I didn't know those things actually packed that much of a punch, but, okay, sure, um... So she's knocking him back in the office, whatever, and she hears her daughter's yelling and screaming, and she rushes to, um, you know, get to her daughter, and she picks up the syringe, and I don't remember, okay, I don't remember if she actually put the syringe in her purse first, or was it after, but at some point, she picks up the syringe, and she runs at Franco, 
and Dante sees this, so he jumps in front of Franco, and Alexis stabs Dante with the needle, and I'm just like, Alexis, you drunken idiot, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm just, I'm literally just like, you goddamn idiot, are you, are you serious? Sam is, is like, what the hell did you just do? Alexis is freaking out, oh my goodness, you know, she does her whole crying thing or whatever, and I'm just like, Alexis, you drunken idiot. I guess it wasn't enough to sit there and hit somebody with your car. You, um, you pretty much just stabbed a man because you was too damn drunk to think. And that's literally what Sam was saying. Sam was like, if you haven't been drinking so much, would you have done that? So at this point, <laughs> you know, Sam is like, listen, if this isn't rock bottom, I don't know what it is. And, um, you know, Portia gets there, Curtis is there, they call Chase, well, Chase is already there, but, you know, they, they call the cops or whatever, Chase just happens to be there, and I guess Jordan was on her way or near the scene. So, you know, Chase starts to question Sam, and at first Sam is, you know, kind of hesitant, but, you know, she looks at her mother, and the mother gives her that look, and she tells everything. She's like, yep, she stabbed her. And um, with that being said, you know, Jordan comes in, and Jordan pretty much reads her her rights, slaps the handcuffs on her, and um, hauls her ass off. Um... You know, Sam is like, listen, you're going to have to sober up one way or the other. Either in rehab or in jail. So, Alexis, I guess you will be going to jail after all. Awesome. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I know a lot of people are giving Tracy grief for, you know, her trying to frame Alexis. And, you know, Tracy was like, listen, I did you a favor because either you were going to um, hurt somebody, or you're gonna get sober. So, I did you a favor, and looking at today's episode, for those people that were just like, you know, Tracy did something terrible, it's like, yeah, she did, but, you know, even though it was terrible, it, it kind of had a good side effect if it would have worked, so, we wouldn't be in this predicament, and my goodness, I'm just, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, because I, I saw the, um, previews, and I was like, hmm, Olivia's going to be this. Olivia's going to be livid. Um, because, you know, lying to her face, sleeping with her husband wasn't enough. Nope. No, 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 no. You could have possibly killed her son. Man, I got to sit there and tell you, if the, if the Brooklyn girl in her, the Ben Star girl in her does not come out, I don't know what will. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait until tomorrow to see that. Um... So, <laughs> let's talk about this this um this interview with Jackie and um, Sasha. So you know Jackie is having a um interview with Sasha on GMA three. You know because it's ABC, so of course they would uh you know pick that news station, but whatever. So you know she's going through an interview. You know just about her drug use, how it started. You know. Numb the pain, all that stuff. Meanwhile, um, while she's doing it, Carly is sweating bullets. Carly is sweating bullets. Nina is livid. Carly tries to stop the interview and, um, Lucy is like, you must be out of your damn mind. Even Max was like, no, that's not happening. Um, so the interview finished, at some point, um, you know, what was her name? Nina comes in, and Nina's about to sit there and stop the interview, and, you know, Valentina's like, yo, that's not a good idea, wait until this is over. So the interview's over, and Nina's like, have you lost your damn mind? What are you doing with that necklace on? And I'm sitting there thinking, you know... I get that Sasha was distracted, you know, whenever she does wardrobes and stuff like that, people just put stuff on her and she doesn't really notice it, so, okay, fine. 
But I'm also sitting there thinking, how the hell did you not know that they put that particular necklace on? I, I just don't understand how you missed that. Like, I mean, they could have just practically put a sign that said, kick me on it. And you just would have went out there and just... <laughs> okay, sure. So she's livid. Okay, she's living. She's like, how could you do this? You know what that necklace means to me? Yada, yada, yada. At some point, Valentine's like, uh, I think Carly may know something about that. I mean, look at her. You know, she practically wants to stop the whole interview. Why don't we ask what Carly's, what, what Carly's thinking? Nina points to Carly, and Nina's like, yo, if you know something about this necklace, tell me. At this point, Avery's like, listen, I didn't mean to get anyone upset, and she's still talking. And... You know, Avery tells Nina that she found it outside in the woods when she was with her mother or whatever. Um, and, you know, at this point, you know, Jax is just looking like, damn it. You know, like he should have just came out with the truth from the start. But, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, he did kind of start this whole thing. So, I mean, he's not exactly getting off scot-free. But, um, you know, at this point... You know, Nina takes the necklace and says she's going to give it back to um, Avery when she's done with it. She wants to make sure that the necklace matches. You know, at this point, you know, um, Michael takes Sasha and um, Avery home. And, um, you know, she's sitting there talking to... She's sitting there talking to Carly like, you know, do you know what this means? If, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I'm just not there thinking, Carly, you know, at some point, the ruse just has to be up, right? Like, you, you, it's time for you to fall in your cars. Just tell her. Because the story is becoming undone as we speak. And even Valentin, you know, he's not an idiot. He's already starting to figure out stuff already. But Carly being Carly is like, nope, we're just going to sit there and just keep on lying. Because that's apparently what we do now. Um... Well, let's be honest. That's what she always done. Um, and so, yeah, that ends that scene. Now, there's some quick... There's some scenes with Jason and Franco. And pretty much, you know, Franco is not there telling um, Jason, you know, everything that happened as far as Alexa stabbing... Um, Alexa stabbing Dante. And I don't know if they said in this one, but in the next one, but... Pretty much, you know, Jason a was asking, like, why did he step in front of, like, why did he save you? And I think he asked him in this one, I think he was like, why did, why did he just jump in to save you like that? You know? Um, there's some quick scenes with, um, Jackie and, uh, Ch -ch -ch Willow, you know, um, Jackie kind of inserts her foot into her mouth a little bit as far as, like, you know, a long-lasting relationship with Chase and Willow. And they both kind of don't say anything at one point, but then Chase gets called away and Jackie's like, listen, I'm sorry for, you know, kind of, you know, stepping over you or whatever. But, um, you know, she pretty much just, like, hopes that they get, you know, back together. You know, now that, you know, he she's no longer with Michael. And, of course... You know, Willa has that look on her face, like, that woe is me look. And I'm just like, here we go again with the stupidity. Willow can't pick, figure out what she wants, and neither can Michael. So, that's just power for the core, I guess. Um, now, so, while Lenny and um, Phyllis are sitting there talking, that state trooper that, um... That dick of a trooper. I'm not going to lie. Between the trooper and Lenny. I just don't understand why everyone is being so. Well just being a dick to Sonny. Um, but he, he brings him in. And he's like. Oh well you know. He got into a fight. with You know he got into an argument with a guy at the hardware store. Because apparently someone, Sonny wanted a job. And the hardware guy. The, the guy was like he's. You know he's not hiring. And then Sonny just. Well, you know, at this point, we all know that he is going through a bipolar episode, and, um, you know, long story short, you know, Phil is like, you know, listen, we'll take responsibility for him. And Lenny was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> we will? So the state trooper leaves, and Phil is like, listen, we gotta, we gotta, like, get you, like, checked out at the hospital. Um, 
And, you know, Sonny's like, I'm not, I, I don't want to do it. I'm, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm not crazy or anything like that. And Lenny's like, listen, you got two choices. Okay. You have to go to go with my wife and get stuff checked out. Or you're going to go back on the street and um, I guess you can just deal with the cops. And uh, seeing how you have no money for bail, good luck. Um, but I'm not going to lie. I feel like that would probably be the best option for him because at least if he goes to jail, at some point he will get fingerprinted and, well, you know, we'll get answers um, about who he is a lot faster. But, um... I was sitting there thinking, I was like, but that's not going to happen because it, you know, we need to kind of drag this out as long as possible. Um, Dante did talk to, well, I, I would love to actually say the new Jordan because I, I actually like this new Jordan. But of course, I don't get what I want. So we all know that uh, that Jordan is only temporary and we're going to be getting back, we're going to be getting back the other Jordan. So... Yay. Um, well, you know, she talked to Dante real quick, and she don't. She talked to Dante real quick, and Dante, you know, she was pretty much like, you know, are you thinking about coming back to the force? We were, you know, we really need you. And Dante was really sharp with her because he's still in the mind control. He's like, yo, I just told you I gotta go. And he apologized, and then he left, and I was like. Jordan, um, are you, are you sure you actually want him back? Because he's not entirely done with whatever he needs to work out. And I think that's the last thing that, well, pretty much anyone needs. Um, now I think the last thing that I want to talk about, and I think that's actually it, is the Jason and, um, Britt storyline. And, um, well, you know, Peter pretty much threatened Britt. And Jason was like, you want to finish that sentence? Um, Peter tried to smooth it over a little bit. Like, oh, well, you know, we just, we argue. That's, that's what, that's what siblings do. And, you know, he gives his whole story about how, you know, the, the public has a right to know. I'm not going to lie. Britt was like, well, you know, if anybody finds out, that's my ass. And I'm sitting there thinking, Britt, do you have amnesia? Because I'm pretty sure I remember that episode where you said, hey, listen, you can just look at it for a quick second, but then I'll come back and we just got to pretend that you didn't. Like, you let him look at the fires. So why are you sitting there getting so angry with him now? Um, but, you know, Jason was like, hey, listen, is there a chance that, you know, she can get, you know, exposed? And Peter was like, no. And Jason was like, you know, we'll just talk this up to a mistake and we'll just, you know quarter wrap. So they leave. <laughs> you know, Britt was like, listen, if something happens to me, not only will I throw you under the bus, I will be the one that's driving it. I'm like, Britt, listen, I didn't like your character before at all because I felt like you were very desperate and clingy to like Patrick. But this version now, this is the version that I like. This is the version I want to stay. Can you please stay? Just please? So, they both leave, and at some point, they, you know, meet up at the hospital. And, you know, Britt is like, yo, I don't need your saving. But, um, you know, Jason was like, listen, we only, you know, did that so that way it's better to have him as an ally than as an enemy, you know, just to protect you. And that's when Britt was like, I don't need your help. Like, I don't need anyone to save me. I'm like, you know, a lot of people... A couple of people have been since they're saying that, you know, Jason and Britt would be really good for each other as far as, like, you know, a couple and stuff like that because Britt is a very strong person and Sam is whatever. But to be honest, Sam was, I mean, before the whole kiss, you know, before she had kids, she was literally ride or die. So I feel like when they sit there and say that Britt is a better companion than Sam, I'm like, did you remember the old Sam? The Sam that actually carried a gun with her? That Sam? Yeah, she was right to die, so let's not... Anyway, at some point, Jason, I guess, no. Britt walks off, but then Britt is doing something on the computer, and her sh her hands start shaking. 
And I don't remember what that's called, but I'm pretty sure it's the same thing that Faison had. And from the looks of it, it's getting, wor it's getting worse, and she's starting to worry. Um, I'm not going to lie, it was... It was kind of a heartbreaking scene a little bit, you know, that nervousness, but yet you have to sit there and try to act like you're strong and whatever around everyone else, so like that was, I don't know why, but that was a little kind of hard to watch. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. You know, towards the end, you know, you had Jason and Sam just lock eyes because, you know, Sam's mother is getting hauled off to jail, and also Sam knows what Jason is going to do to Franco, and, you know, if he does anything out of line, anything short of, I don't know, jaywalking, um, he's going to have a bullet in his head. Um, I'm just, I'm just keep snifted thinking, you know, Alexis, you drunken idiot, once again, if you didn't run over somebody with your car... By the way, this is actually the second time that she actually ran over somebody with a car, um, Kiefer. But to be fair, that guy deserved everything that he had, and to be honest, I actually hoped that she would actually just make sure just by backing into him. But, whatever. Um, yeah, I think that's actually about it. I don't think I really missed too much of anything important. If I did, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I kind of felt like I botched the last, um review a little bit towards the end I mean just a little bit um yesterday's review and I always sit there and try to do them as as perfect as I can um because I feel like if people watch I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I do a good job so um I want to thank everyone for watching it especially if you're watching it late or tomorrow thank you very much be safe I will catch everyone in the next review have a good day or good night.